got it together. <laughs> there he is. Why, am I on there? Yes, you're on. How are you? Good afternoon, Romeo. Uh, I'm blessed. How are you? Where are you driving to? I'm not driving. I'm actually, I came in the car to do this. I'm getting tatted up right now. So. For real? Oh, my God. I had, to, I had to come sit in the car so make sure it's nice and quiet. Oh, so we my. Can have this interview. Look, blessings. I really, really appreciate you doing it. Yeah, it's all, it's all love. How are you doing? How are you holding up with quarantine? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm alive, you know, so that's always the silver lining. There's a lot of people who lost their lives. I'm a lot of people who lost their jobs, even including me. Um, having been filming Ets on the Beach, you would have did at least two more seasons of that with MTV. I was supposed to film my first faith-based movie, produce and direct it and starring myself. Um, that's on hold. So a lot of work's on hold, but I think um, we got to find those silver linings at a time like this. How can we improve? How could we help? If others need help, how could we help them? Um, I think it's easy to kind of let everything affect you and you feel like the weight of the world's on your shoulders, but you gotta, you gotta have that positive outlook through it all. Right. And, and that's what I've been trying to do through, through all this time and try to be, trying to be a blessing to others as well. Now, what have you, um, how have you helped or how ha has it improved you? Like you said, it's a time to improve. So, and so I'll tell you, honestly, um, that saying everything that glitters ain't gold, right? My career I've been working since I was 10 years old. I had one of the biggest um, child childhood careers ever. You know, uh, I was the face of a generation. So people don't realize the hard work. They see my dad and they're like, oh, your pop's masterpiece. So he must have sn snapped his fingers and now you're successful. And now you're selling millions of records and have the top TV show and the top clothing line. And people don't realize I had to go put in the work. You know, I was a kid who... I didn't have time off, you know? I never had a rest day. I never had a sleep day. I loved playing basketball. I loved going to school. I loved making music. I loved making movies, which means while other kids were sleeping, I had to actually, okay, if I'm going to go make a movie, I still got to go to school. And then I still want to play basketball. I still got to go to practice. You know, if I want to go try to create a clothing company, I got to go to the meetings like all the adults. So I didn't really sleep. That's why I'm not six five like my dad. I'm six <laughs> foot. You know, my little brother's the ninth grader already six four. Oh you wow. Know, I, the senior, he's six four too. All the dudes in my family six four taller, except me and my cousin, who actually were the best athletes in the family. Wow. But, um, yeah. I'm as I'm taller than what people think though. So I can't no. I can't knock that. I'm blessed. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah. I'm blessed. But um nah, on a real note, um, this lockdown allowed me to finally have time off because mm. I would have never took time off myself we live in a world where it's like if you take a day off somebody else is going to pass you up if mm. you take time off and we live in a world where we're programmed once we're we start working and I start working at 10 but usually it's like 18 years old you know 19 years old where when kids start working you don't stop right. have you ever realized that like once we turn 18 and you start working you don't stop Right. And that was me at 10. Like, my life just kept going, kept going, and kept going. And the cool thing I want to tell y'all is that people see how close me and my dad are, right? Mm -hmm. We're very close. We're business partners. We do all of that together. We never sat home and watched TV or a movie together. Never. No. Never. Until the lockdown. Wow. So, so like, even me and my dad was able to bond on another level. How was that for you? Like, was that like a, I mean, I know you and your dad are close, but like, it was a different way that y'all were bonding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think um, people see our, our career on the outside and they think, or anybody's life from the outside, and you may think you know everything. Me and my dad were very close, but we're close with boundaries, you know? Uh, I'm still the son. He's still my dad. We don't really cross that. He's my best friend, even though he's the closest person to me. But um, it's very much a still dynamic of that's my pops. I mean, that's the dude who brought me into the world, just like with my mom. That's still my mom. You know, I'm going to respect them to the day that I'm, I'm gone. So, um, yeah, we have, very, we have different views. We even have different, like, perspectives on what's funny or, you know, what type of movies we like to watch. So me and him never just chill and actually just watch something because we actually got different tastes. 
people think we're the same person because we're, we ride or die for each other, but we're, two, we're, we're light and day. One's wow. the moon, one's the sun. You know, one's yin, one's yang, you know. But uh, right. this pandemic allowed me to spend quality time with my family in a way I wasn't able to um, before. Yeah, no, that's a good, I, and I agree with you that that happened to me too. It just made the bonds a little bit closer. Yeah. And it gave me a moment to kind of relax and really put in perspective what I want out of life. I, I realized I don't want to be working till I, you know, mm. you know what I'm saying? Work yourself to death. That's Guess what God God didn't put us on earth to go to a job twenty four seven just to die. And that's what I tell people. Nothing's wrong with doing what you gotta do. But you gotta realize our purpose is so much bigger than just getting the job and working ourselves to death. And when you reach that part of life, when you you wake up and you realize that, that's when you start fulfilling your purpose. For sure, for sure. So I do wanna talk about something that you are doing even despite, you know, some other works that you lost is the mix um which yeah. it's basically a, a a show you're a co-host on on the yeah. show talk show i'm a talk show host who would have thought little romeo would be a talk show host i'm still pinching myself because i wouldn't imagine that in a million years especially with my personality i'm a, a introverted type of guy um believe it or not even though i had this this big career and my job i'm in front of the camera um i find my peace just having that alone time so um, having a talk show where you got to be on literally every day, show up to work, um, discuss your opinions at work, it was very out of the box, but I feel it was one of those things where God knows what's best. You know, God's, God know why he's using you, and you mm -hmm. can't argue with that, you can't fuss with that, you can't run away from that. And that's why this talk show, The Mitts, is so important, because this generation, we're, we're giving these, uh, this generation a voice. We're giving this generation um, people who look like us, people who look like us. Sorry, they come and knock, knock on the window. I'll be there in a minute. But um, we're giving people who look like us a voice, an opportunity to, to make a difference. And that's why I love, you know, the, the other co-hosts on there. We got Zonique. We got mm -hmm. Anton. We got Jazz. We got Jamie, which is the baby. She's like 17 or 18 years old, the youngest talk show host ever. But it's like you haven't seen anything like this on TV. And to be able to um, do this right now during a pandemic, I think it's kind of like it's very soothing to know that there's people out there who's fighting for you. There's people out there who care about um, what really matters. And the myths, I think we're here to stay. Hopefully yeah. the people are enjoying it. But I think this is something that's very, very um, different and needed in this time. Well, you guys talk about an array of topics, so it could be from... My fault. Know. They're distracting me out there. I'm... <laughs> All right. Let me get back. I'm, I'm here. Yeah. So you guys talk about, like, current affairs, dating, you know, politics. Um, was it a little scary? Because now you're kind of putting your opinion and your thoughts on the forefront. And that may, you know, there may be some people that don't agree with how you view certain things, you know? Yeah. Um that was something we all talked about um, as host on this show. It's like, you're throwing it out there. You know, you're having conversations that you may just have with your family or your cousin or your friend or your girl or your homie or whoever. Right. And you're having it with the world. But truly, I think that's what the world needs. And you need to see that from people who's level-minded, people who's grounded, people who's educated, and people who've seen that side as well. And that's mm -hmm. why all the co-hosts on here it's a unique blend. The, the people on this show are people who will be actually getting interviewed themselves. So it's kind of like you get both sides. Right. And, and um, I think you have to, you got to step outside your comfort zone. If you want any type of real success, if you want to make any type of difference, you got to step outside of your comfort zone. And that's what we're doing. But at the end of the day, I tell people this show to mix is like gumbo. You know, you're going to just feel like, you chilling with your friends in the living room, having a conversation. It may be about politics. It may be about relationships. It may be, be about whatever, but we just going to keep it 100 and you're going to get uh, five different perspectives on it. That's and Ty right. did a, a, a hell of a job with um, picking the right, the right, the right fit. No, for sure. And I was just like, this is cool because it's on Fox soul. So yeah. I love the fact that it's all people of color, black yeah. folks getting together 
you know, and yeah, young. No. Big shout out to Fox Soul. Um, that's why that was why I leaned towards doing this. You know, we wanted to do somewhere it's for us. You know, it's for our culture, and nobody's going to try to tamper that or change that or say, oh, well, you need to do this because this is what's going to get the ratings, or you need to talk about this because this is what they're talking about over there. We talk about what we want to talk about and what we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. And I love to, um, one thing that you, you not only try to spread the message on the talk show, but just on your own personal pages, like yeah. I saw you, you kind of spoke about generational wealth and how, you know, your you guys have now watched Uncle P's, the cereal, and I love me some yeah. cereal. <laughs> I'll hook you up. <laughs> yeah, so definitely, if you please can send me some cereal, because I, I love it. But, <laughs> no, for real. I, listen, I can I'm going to get up. That's, that's the perks of being the boss. We can <laughs> send you however many you need. I can I can eat a box of cereal in a day. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay? <laughs> I love cereal. So talk to me about why you chose cereal, maybe, you know, and not yeah. drink, an energy drink yeah. or something. Well, me and my pops, the funny thing with our careers, right, we started off in hip-hop. My dad never wanted to be the best rapper, the greatest rapper. You know, uh, my dad's a hustler. You know, he played basketball so he could get a scholarship, so he could get his, his education. You know, it was never, well, I'm going to be the best rapper and X, Y, and Z. It was to put his people in a better position. And that's the biggest thing I picked up on with my pops. I never wanted to be this superstar or little Romeo to be famous. I wanted to build a platform so that I could actually be able to give back to my people, my family, our culture, you know, black people in general, to show them that if we could do it, you could do it too. Mm. We're not perfect. And that's what I tell people. People look at me and my dad as like, we're regular men. Like, regardless of what you say, we bleed just like you bleed. The only difference is, and I could tell you this, my dad wake up in the morning and he believe in himself more than anybody on planet earth. I wake up in the morning. I believe in myself more than anybody. You don't have to tell me, um, uh, you're good enough to be this and that. I already know what I'm great at. I already believe in myself. And that's what Bible study was about yesterday. If you uh, checked out my post, yeah. it basically says God can't, he can't bless you until you believe. And this serial and, uh, where we're going now, it shows that, Anything is possible if you truly believe. Who would have thought that if you look back at Hootie Who, it was a rap song, and now it's uh, Serios and it's giving back to the underprivileged and the charities all across the world when you purchase this. It shows growth. And that's what I was telling my dad yesterday. Yeah, some people on there talking about, well, why are you naming Hootie Who, this and that? It's like, for me, it kind of reminds me of Moses in the Bible where the man was struggling for 40 years, lost in the desert for 40 years. But God knew when he was going to use him. And I tell my dad, look, don't let nobody talk you down. You know, you God got to use you to show your growth. Mm -hmm. This, the hootie who cereal shows your growth that is way bigger than rap. Mm -hmm. It may have started from rap, but we showing you what it's going to mean now. And we just want to, you know, we took over music. You know, now we try to take over grocery stores, baby. That's real wealth. That's generational wealth. And I think that's what a lot of people in our... Um, in our uh, culture don't realize they have a lot of millionaires and billionaires out there and they're a lot more successful than any rapper or any athlete. They mm -hmm. own these grocery stores. They own these products. They own these companies. We need to start showing our youth that it's cool to go get your education and be a young businessman or woman. Yeah. There's a lot of more millionaires out there who's not playing a sport. You just don't see it in our culture and that's what we're doing now like i say we're not perfect we're not god but we're definitely going to play our part to to plant that seed i love that i think that is amazing and i i, I definitely wanted to touch on that because i found that very interesting um i know i don't have much time with you so i'm gonna ask you this question and i see people saying i'm flirting i am not flirting with you i promise <laughs> God, my boyfriend is in the next room. So. <laughs> Look, I get it. Look, I gotta, I gotta tell you though. Why does this generation, when um, somebody is just respectful, right, and they just think it's flirting? Why is that? This generation, do you have to be a jackass or mean to everybody you come across if they're the opposite sex? Listen, I 
my whole thing is when I do interviews, um, you know, I want to make the person feel positive, uplifted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not a gossiper. I'm more, I try to do more of the positive thing. Yeah. So I'm going to laugh. I, I, I naturally laugh with everybody. That's A. Yeah. That's A. Let's just start there. I yeah. try to laugh. I'm like, ki, 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 you know, which it's not flirting. I promise to God, if I was, I, I'm not even the type of person that's going to If you flirt. was flirting, they're going to know you flirting. That's, That's what I, I'm the same way. If I, I'm really flirting with you, Shardy, Shardy gonna know I'm flirting. D come on. Listen. Come on. I you feel know, you. So it's like a lot of times when I see comments on my interviews, I just be like, what do you, what, what, you know, so, what, what, I, I can't, can't win sometimes. But, you can't, you can't but, win. That's, um, that's just life, the world we live in. When, before my, you know, my last life got all jacked up. Everybody wanted to know. I promise to God, they kept asking, please ask him if he is single. Yeah. That is one of the things. So, are you single? Am I? You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to tell y'all, I've, uh, I've lived a lot of life to be so young. Um, I pay attention to people, right? That's why I was able to escape that... Uh, childhood they say the child celebrity or childhood curse yeah. that a lot of these child entertainers have because i study i study okay why did justin timberlake escape this and why did michael jackson go through this and then why did s y and z go through that and the one thing i realized with the people who started off young and very successful is that their private life was their private life and that's what i'm learning i put relationships you know on TV or posted, and it's like, if I'm going to find somebody, I have to find somebody first. I can't just want to show them off to the world. You know, I can't just want to um, post them up just so for a reaction. Mm -hmm. So I'm at a place in my life where if I found somebody, when I find somebody, I'll know first, and then the world will know when they know. Right. Private life, happy life. Oh, no, for sure. I, I like that answer. Um, yeah. and again, to piggyback off of this, again, <laughs> question, I, I promise you, they, they want to dig it, huh? Let me hear. What qualities are you looking for in a woman? What qualities? That's a great question. Um, Because when you're younger, right, you think that you have a dream girl based off of, oh, that's my favorite actress or that's my favorite singer or whatever. I had put into your brain, too. Yeah. Yeah, you know? so and you think that you have this dream girl, and then as you get older, you start realizing your dream girl is the person your spirit connects with. You know, um, it may not be that person who you idolize on TV or wanting to find a look alike like her. You're gonna realize it's gonna be the person who connects with you. So I'm really big on, you know, going into chapter thirty. You know, it's about finding that person who connects with me and my spirit. I think love is easy. A lot of people, you can love a lot of people. You can love your mom. You can love your dad. You can love your dog. You can love your friends. You can love a guy or a girl tomorrow. That doesn't mean that person is for you. That doesn't mean that's your somebody. So I tell people, find somebody who values you. Find somebody who will fight for you every day. And find somebody who connects with you. Because we're not perfect. I compare love. Look at our family members. How many times do we... um? argue with our brothers and sisters but we still love them right? right how many times we argue with our parents we had those moments where you thought it was over they kicked you out the house and then guess what they still there for you so love is actually the easy thing if you think about it you got to build that foundation mm -hmm. and for me um yeah i love smart i love an educated woman um i have a lot of friends my ones the ones who's educated and the ones who's not they just live life differently I think it plays a big part in growth. Um, somebody who works hard, um, very family orientated. It's so weird. That no, no, don't you see freeze. You're freezing. Oh, can you see me? I can see you, but you're froze. Oh, <laughs> man. It'll Am I there? Out. It'll work itself out. Have the faith. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you, though. I can hear you. You're just frozen. That's terrible. <laughs> there we go am i back am i back yes all right but i was saying um there's been women in my life who i could see myself with and who i adored but it's like i gotta connect with the family you know like 
your mom is going to be my mom. Your dad is going to be my dad. And that's a big deal for me. Like, that's a, a big part of getting Romeo. Sure. What'd you say? I said, that's a, that's just a big part of, if you want to get Romeo, that that's a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, those are some good qualities. Now, what about religion? Are you, does she have to be really spiritual, spiritually grounded? Um, I think that's why you have a man like me. I'm going to catch you up, baby. But you definitely got to be open. You know, you got to be open and you got to realize like the world is so much bigger than just us. Like you got to believe in something and then, you know, time will work out itself. Mm -hmm. But God fearing is always you get brownie points, of course. Definitely. Definitely. I love it. I love it. So on that note, I know you got to go. I see one yeah. question I'm going to take from okay. the and that's it. Um, this is from Mike. And he says, ask him what inspired him to do the mix. That's a good question. I like that. Great question, because I never seen myself as a talk show host. Like, it's something that comes natural and it's been easy, even with my MTV gig, being the host of Etso on the Beach and then doing little uh, things here and there. I never seen myself really diving in and doing a talk show every week, every day. But um, the people connected. You know, Tiny is a big part. When I heard she was a part of this and she wanted me a part of this, I couldn't say no to Queen Tiny. You know, um, her vision of wanting to create a platform for the, the youth and um, for people like us, that was a no-brainer. And I just feel like I said, it's one of those things with God knows best. I felt like I was getting pushed to do this. Um, if this pandemic never happened, I probably I wouldn't have done it, to be honest, because you get so caught up in your day-to-day -day life. You get so caught up in what you want to do. And I finally had time to just sit down and pray about things before truly making a decision, mm. you know? And I actually had the time to not only pray about it, but receive the answer. So, uh, yeah, it was just a lot of prayer. Um, Tiny um, had a big influence on me. Our showrunner, Jill King. Yes. Uh, my agent believed in this, Nick Roses. And then when they told me the other people who was going to be a part of it, I just felt like this is something that could change the world. This is something where kids could go and watch and not only be, be entertained, but get educated as well. I love that. I love that, Romeo. Well, yeah. um, and any music are you working on? I mean, I know it's kind of... Yeah. Okay. Music's, in, music's in my blood, and I'm thinking I'm going to release a, a project, a visual project, mm -hmm. um, sometime next year, but it's always in my blood. So always be on the lookout for new music. I got my faith-based my faith -based movie, which I was supposed to start in production before... Um, everything got shut down. God is real with me and my pops. We're starring in it, producing it, directing it, looking for the next big star. So we'll be working on that as soon as we could. And then um, just a lot of uh, our brands. You know, we got the Rap Snacks. Shout out to James out in Miami. We got the Rap Noodles. We have the the cereal now from the Uncle P brand. Um, and then we got Mignotti's. Mm. I also, before we go, I got to give a big shout out to my little brothers, Hersey and Mercy Miller, the top high school basketball players. They're beasts, six, four point guards. Um, but the thing I like about those kids, which a lot of kids don't get a credit for, the ones who's not only just great athletes, but great students. So shout out to all the great student athletes out there. And can I shout you out, Romeo? Um, I appreciate you doing this interview with me. Um, I've been, you know, trying to continue working while on quarantine and you know for you to take the time out for you to post for you to support small yeah. journalists you know a lot of times celebrities like to just go to the ellens and the mm -hmm. but some of us smaller people that are are trying to provide a platform of positive you know and highlighting you know people such as yourself doing positive things kind of get push to the back burner because we're not people or E or, you know. So I really appreciate you doing this and taking the time out. Good luck with your tattoo. I don't want to keep you any longer. I know I went over my time, but... Nah, look, it's all good. If you no. know anything about our family, my pops come from nothing. The Calio projects, projects. We always been the underdog. Even my entire career, people may think that, oh, he had it easy or he was supposed to be successful. You know, I was independent, so I wasn't supposed to even be as big as I was. I had to work three times as hard as somebody who wasn't independent. And um, this is why we do it, you know, to put platforms like you, put that light on you, because 
this is where it starts. This is who really makes the difference. So I appreciate you. And uh, even when I posted that, I remember my agents hit me up. It's like, can you repost da 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 da? I'm like, I'm already did that. You don't got to tell me to do that. I'm gonna do that myself. Yeah. So, like, definitely, you got a supporter in me as well, and you can always hit me up for an interview. Thank you so much, Romeo. Sure. This was an amazing interview. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Good luck with everything. I'll be watching you on Fox. Oh, Soul. I got a big secret. Oh, what? Tune into the mix tomorrow on Fox Soul, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern, baby. Tune yeah. in. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Drop that plug. I yeah. love that. I love that. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your uh, day. And, you know, good luck with that tattoo. I don't know. I'll be uh, scared. We're going to see. We're going to see. <laughs> All right. Bless you. Bye. Bye, Romeo. Peace out.